What's up guys, John Burden here in Durango and Bayfield, Colorado with Woosa Properties. We're gonna start this video with showing you and comparing the Viacito Reservoir to Lake Nighthorse. So Viacito is about 20 minutes from um, downtown Bayfield, Colorado. And then Lake Nighthorse is 10, 12 minutes from downtown Durango. So a little bit closer, but still, um, you know, that 20 minute range from a lot of subdivisions and homes in and around Durango. Viacito is a stunning lake. I love this lake. I think the one con, if you will, and kind of comparison is it's really not as kid friendly and family friendly. So Lake Nighthorse does a great job in the summer. They have a thing called the Wibbit, which is this like uh, inflatable playground almost where you can jump off it. There's slides, there's tons of little like, it's almost like an obstacle course in the water. So they've got that great um, amenity, if you will, for kids. They have lifeguards. They have a nice area, like a sandy beach, where you can play, have fun, um, set up the set up the umbrellas. Your kids can have a great time there. They have a um, triathlon that goes on there. It was just a couple weeks ago. It's awesome. They've got a little trail. Um, it's about mile and a half one way dirt trail kind of rolling hills around part of the lake so you can go for a run you can go for a swim and then there's some great biking around it so you can go for a bike ride too now i'm a distance runner so i love viacito reservoir the other side of the reservoir is all dirt so it's a great road to run on um, you know really light amount of traffic and then what's stunning about this lake is they've got a ton of camping options as well uh, great fishing They've got salmon, they've got uh, bass, they've got pike, they've got a ton of different uh, variety of fish here. And just, you know, as you can see, you can put your boats in. Um, they've got a great marina. They've got a great uh, restaurant here on the lake, Waimanush Grill. They've got uh, plenty of Airbnb options around here. And this is a much bigger lake a lot more amenities as far as that goes. Now I'm really trying to show you guys a lot of those details that are tough to see if you don't live here, um, such as kind of the differences of which lake is more family friendly, things like that. But this is why you guys gotta reach out to us. So if you're considering maybe living closer to the lake or closer to certain amenities, let us know. We'd be happy to get the drone up in the air, show you those specific areas specifically for you. Um, walk you through some of the pros and cons on a call with you, let you know. Uh, again, we are licensed realtors here in Durango in Southern Colorado area. Be happy to help you with anything you guys need real estate related. Give us a call days, nights, weekends. We've got your back when it comes to moving to this area. Uh, right now we're at Little Pine River Park and I'm gonna start by showing you this park and I'm gonna try to do a lot of comparisons so that you get the actual information that you're looking for. Uh, comparing subdivisions and comparing parks and comparing restaurants and things like that. So we're in Little Pine River Park. Um, this park I would compare to the area of Oxbow, which is just as you're in Durango, which is just as you're going north, um, just getting out of town. There's a really nice little park, very similar to this park, uh, where the Animus River runs by it. And they've got some trails just like they do here. But they've got some nice little walking trails here I said there's roughly a mile worth of walking trails here, which is really similar to the uh, Oxbow Preserve um, over in Durango as well. And so where we're located is we are just as you're getting into Bayfield, right to the right of the sign. Right as you see the Bayfield sign, you pull into this parking lot. Um, to the right of Highway 160. All right, guys, we are now at Nature's Oasis. Uh, the location, we are just across the street from the road that goes up to Lake Nighthorse and just south of downtown Durango. This is a really good comparison, or this store would be a really good comparison to something like Whole Foods. A uh, lot more selection, a uh, lot of more specialty items, great deli, smoothies, sandwiches. Um, they have a liquor uh, store as well really nice location a lot of people shop here got a great selection of beef um, grass-fed grass finished beef they've got jacks is a uh, one of their brands one of their companies and then they've also got james ranch that they serve really really good beef we actually buy james ranch um, in bulk really enjoy that if you guys have any questions about that feel free to reach out uh, they've got just a lot of other great selections as far as smoothies sandwiches like i mentioned a minute ago 
Um, some really great choices as far as liquor and alcohol go as well. Uh, really good at ordering stuff. If you're looking for some like specialty item, they can order stuff, uh, do a good job of doing that as well. We're here at Natural Grocers. It's directly across from City Market, Town Plaza Shopping Center, and right across from downtown Durango. Uh, this is a spot that we shop at quite a bit. Ironically, I wanted to mention and forgot to mention, Nature's Oasis is right on the river trail. Um, and ironically, so is Natural Grocers. So you could park near or at one of these, uh, go for a run, go for a walk, and then do uh, and then do do your shopping here. So a few reasons we shop here is their eggs are all 100% free range. Their dairy is all pasture based, uh, pasture based dairy, and then their fruit is all 100% USDA organic so there's no risk of cross-contamination. Now I'm gonna head over to the Bayfield grocery store so you can compare and contrast uh, grocery stores from Durango to Bayfield. I wanna read you some reviews. Uh, they had 3.5 star average on Google at 181 reviews. So I'm gonna read you some reviews. For a small town grocery, this place is nice. I prefer to get my beef and pork here and the bread I buy is cheaper and my family likes it better. Some things are more expensive than the box stores but not enough to drive into Durango when I need just a few items. The owner and his employees are so kind and jumped into helping me when I didn't even ask uh, when I was pregnant and had a newborn. Uh, their prices are perhaps a bit high, but this is still a really cool place. Wide variety of products that you wouldn't usually expect to find in stores of this size. Shelves are always full and the place is always spotless and to that a super friendly and helpful staff. You get five stars from me easily. All right, now I want to give you a couple of negative reviews. Got to give you both, right? Uh, if you're planning on spending more than $10 and have the time, it's best to go to Durango. Quality of some of the goods here, namely Surefine products, is the bottom of the barrel. It has gotten better, especially with the new upgrades, but uh, food storage has been a big problem. Um, that was from three years ago. I really want to emphasize that. I looked and couldn't find any bad reviews within a year, so that's a really positive thing to say. There is another grocery store, Rocky Mountain General Store. It's four and a half stars, 135 reviews. That is up by Vicedo Lake. So keep in mind, if you decide to buy a home up near Vicedo, there is a good grocery store up that way. Um, I popped in there the other day, found some local elk sausage that I bought for our family. So they've got some really cool local type products up there as well. All right, so the first subdivision I'm gonna show you in Bayfield is the Pine River Ranch. Now, I personally really, really love this subdivision. This is probably my favorite subdivision in Bayfield. So I'm gonna have a lot of fun showing you this one. The reason why is it has the Los Pinos River running right through the subdivision or kind of through the back of the subdivision, if you will. Then they also have a big pond, big community pond that everybody can use. Um, there is a property for sale, several properties for sale. And so I'll kind of give you a comparison of an actual property that's for sale right now and compare it to a subdivision in Durango. Um, the subdivision in Durango is right off of County Road 240. It's about 10 minutes from town, just like this subdivision is, just about 10 minutes from town as well. So it's a really good comparison, I think. Um, two subdivisions kind of see around me, two subdivisions that are fairly, a little bit forested, um, good amount of green uh, grass and trees around you and it has that river running through through it as well as a pond so both of these have that same aspect to it right behind me is actually the pond uh, really nice size pond that they have I see a kayak uh, right next to it and there's a picnic bench right there check out this pond it's beautiful and so a few other things, the utilities in here, well, septic and propane, HOA dues, 500 a year. Then um, it's gonna cover snow removal and road maintenance. Uh, your views, you can kind of see a little bit of a ridge behind me. You have some ridges kind of around this property and similar in um, Florida River Estates, very similar views. You've got some kind of ridges. You're kind of tucked in a little bit of a valley over there as well. You're gonna see deer, you're gonna see, and I just saw some deer while I was driving, I got a clip of it for you as well. In this subdivision, you're gonna see the occasional bear. You're gonna see tons of different birds out here. And again, um, one thing I wanted to touch on was the snow comparison. So you're gonna see 
very similar amounts of snow from here to that specific subdivision I'm referring to in Durango, uh, Florida River Estates, because they are about 10 minutes up the road um, on Florida Road. And so they're up about 7,200 feet elevation, which is similar to here. But if we compare here to in-town Durango, you're gonna get quite a bit more snow here compared to in-town Durango. So really wanna give you that comparison of snow, um, proximity to town, we're really similar here to that specific subdivision. Feel free to reach out to me if you see, if you're not seeing maybe the drone footage or the video footage you want of this subdivision or anything else in this entire video. And I'm happy to get that drone back out, go out and shoot a video, get you more info, get you more drone coverage and send that directly to you. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you'd like more drone footage of anything you see in any of these videos at all. You are really close to the Pine River again, obviously because it's going right through the subdivision as far as what you're close to uh, regarding water. And then you've got the Viacito Reservoir about 21 minutes away. That is an amazing lake, lots of great boating, great paddle boarding, great fishing, um, dranglers, guides on that, um, some huge fish in there. And they've got a big uh, variety of fish as well. Pike, um, trout, you've got carp, got a big variety of fish in there and then lemon reservoir is about 17 minutes away from this subdivision uh, you're about 10 minutes to your closest restaurant uh, or six miles and the one that I was referring to uh, for that distance is Brenda's Old West Cafe really good they're rated number one on TripAdvisor home sizes in here range uh, range 780 square feet to 3673 square feet in here all right, we are now over here in Florida River Estates. I personally really love this subdivision, again, because it's got water. It's got uh, river, the Florida River running right through it. And then it's got these two really nice ponds that you see right here behind me. Now we are right off of Florida Road, which turns into County Road 234 for reference. Uh, give you a little bit more about the location. We are just past Edgemont Meadows, Edgemont Ranch area. Um, probably 400 yards, half a mile, less than half a mile past there, and just past the fire station as well. And then you are um, about 16 minutes to downtown. And so that you know the reference point I used, I used the Strader Hotel as my reference point for exactly about 16 minutes uh, from downtown. Now a little bit more about here, I'm gonna go into uh, the trails nearby. Start with kind of talking to you about the trails. You've got the Horse Gulch Trail System really close by. A separate entrance that's not as common is just down the road. You're about three, four minute drive down the road. You turn onto a dirt road. Um, I'll put up a map of that as well, show you where that's at. But you're really close to the Horse Gulch Trail System. Definitely some more trails up towards Viacito as well. But I want to just stick with giving you the closest trails uh, to the subdivision. Uh, the closest water and fishing, kind of obvious. Uh, you've got the Florida River running right through the subdivision, like I mentioned. You've got private access if you live here. Then these ponds behind me are also stocked as well. Uh, also, what's cool about these ponds, and in contrast in comparison to a lot of other, uh, or some other subdivisions, such as the ranch, such as Dalton Ranch, which those two subdivisions are up north, you can't swim and paddleboard and get in the water of those subdivisions but here you can here you can get in the water swim paddleboard um, take out a little kayak uh, sit on a sit on your paddleboard just enjoy the water and that is something you can do here so really want to contrast that as well um, the closest fishing other fishing is going to be Viceta Reservoir 23 minutes away Lemon uh, Reservoir about 19 minutes away your closest restaurant um, again, about 15 minutes right downtown. It's going to be all those restaurants right downtown or 8.1 miles. Uh, the restaurant I'm going to throw out, of course, there's a bunch of restaurants downtown. One I really like is Derailed Poor House. The other one I really like is called Primus. Really, really good place. Um, really nice atmosphere. A little bit higher end uh, restaurants as far as price tag goes. If you want some other uh, restaurant recommendations, please reach out. Let me know. Happy to throw you my recommendations as well. Uh, another great one I'll mention right now is actually Grass Burger. If you want a really good burger, Grass Burger is a great restaurant as well. Now let's get into 
the uh, this subdivision itself home sizes really really range 11 20 to 38 65 square feet and then lot sizes just below an acre to three acres in here so all of them really nice lot sizes in here and want to talk about elevation so again in contrast to Bayfield uh, your elevation is fairly similar you're at 72 11 elevation here and you're going to get quite a bit more snow than in town Durango in contrast to Durango and then in comparison to Bayfield pretty similar amount of snow here specifically in Florida River Estates compared to Bayfield fairly similar uh, but keep in mind quite a bit more than in town Durango surprisingly you know you're about 800 feet difference Durango 65 12 in town versus here at 72 uh, but that makes quite a bit of difference. You're really in the forest, in the pines here, kind of in this valley. And so as far as views go, you're going to have kind of this ridge around you. You're not going to have any real like mountain views, but you definitely have this ridge around you, which is really pretty, kind of this forested ridge. A um, little bit more info about here. Another subdivision that comes to mind is Falls Creek Ranch. I just want to compare, contrast, show you other subdivisions that are kind of similar to this in the sense of having water. They've got a much bigger pond. Um, I really call it a lake. Um, really good sized lake. They've got a dock. They've got a place to actually put paddle boards. Uh, if you haven't seen the video, I've got a video, the North Durango vlog. Check that one out. That one I go into detail on that subdivision, but that one is up North uh, Durango, about 10, 12 minutes from downtown Durango, similar distance. They get less snow out that way, but they've got a really big lake. So if you like, or, or good sized pond slash lake, kind of in the middle there. So if you like water, having water, they don't have a stream, but they've got all acre, one acre lots, and they've got a great pond as well. Uh, so this subdivision, again, really good option if you want to be still close to town, kind of that 15, 16 minute, under 20 minute range, um, and you want to maybe have a little bit more acreage, a little bit more space, but you still want to be close to town. You don't want to be way out by Vicedo Lemon Reservoir. You don't want to be way up by Purgatory where you get way more snow. Uh, let me know if you want any additional uh, tours, videos of this subdivision or any other subdivisions you see in these videos. I'm happy to get the drone up in the air, shoot a personalized uh, drone video slash regular, you know, walking tour for you if you would like that. Really just want to emphasize more than happy to, yeah, just get the drone up in the air, get you guys more footage. All right, so we just came from walking two neighborhoods that were in that price range from about 700 to 1.2, 1.3 million uh, in that range. And so now I want to contrast that with two subdivisions, one called Forest Lakes, that's about 15 minutes away from downtown Bayfield, to another subdivision called Durango West. There's Durango West 1 and 2. Uh, that's again about 15 minutes from downtown Durango. Two subdivisions, very similar proximity to each town and very similar subdivisions in that they're both very forested and similar price range. So we're gonna cut to that now. The big difference that you will see is in Forest Lakes, they have Lake Simpatico. They have a really nice lake. They are also gonna get quite a bit more snow than in Durango and than in uh, Durango West. Durango West does get more snow than um, once you get into downtown Durango because they are higher elevation. So I will mention that now, um, but they're going to get less snow than in Forest Lakes. So guys, I love doing these type of comparison videos, getting way more niche down into the real details of comparing Bayfield to Durango or Bayfield to Mancus or Ignacio or Cortez or these different areas around here. And so I wanted to mention guys, if you're even thinking about moving to Durango or the Bayfield area, or just the surrounding areas, make sure to give me a call, text, email, days, nights, weekends. We are licensed realtors. We'd love to help you out with anything when it comes to buying, selling, investing in this area. Love to help you out. Feel free to reach out. Again, if you just want more information, um, just have questions in general, or would love to buy your dream home out here, let us know. Now, to specifically compare and contrast Durango West to Forest Lakes over in Bayfield, or close to the area of Bayfield, uh, I wanna start with, again, the snow. You might guys might be tired of me talking about snow, but I find that a lot of clients, they give me a call, 
and are looking at homes don't quite realize the difference in when we look at a property at higher elevation versus lower elevation and what that winter will look like for them uh, kind of on a day-to-day -day basis. So Forest Lakes out in Bayfield, you're gonna still get substantially more snow than here in Durango West. Now you're still gonna get a good amount of snow in Durango West compared to downtown Durango. Um, so it's like, as far as amount of snow, I'm gonna go downtown Durango or in town here, Durango West, and then up at Forest Lakes. So Forest Lakes varies based on what part of Forest Lakes you live in because it climbs in elevation as you get into the subdivision. So the roads just go up and up and up and kind of peak out. So um, first of all, keep that in mind, it's dependent on the part of Forest Lakes you're in. Then keep in mind, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine that lives there and he was saying how one of the frustrations is as these snow trucks uh, plow, and this is gonna be the same anywhere, but it's gonna be probably more substantial in Forest Lakes. They're on dirt roads for one. Um, but as they plow, they're gonna be pushing snow into your driveway. And so you're gonna have to push that snow out of your driveway as well. Now I wanna discuss some other options. If you're looking for homes kind of in that 500,000 range, or just, hey, what is out there that's affordable that I can get? Um, you're gonna be looking at areas, maybe you type in La Plata County is what I recommend into realtorzillow.com. And that way it kind of opens you up to the whole county. Now keep in mind the edge of the county from downtown Durango, it's gonna be 40, 45 minutes depending on the area um, from downtown, if not, well, if not further, but kind of somewhere around 45 minutes to an hour is gonna be the edge of the county. And then some homes that might come up, I was just looking in preparation for this video, there was a two bed, one bath, and I just searched under 550,000. There was a two bed, one bath that came up off of County Road 141. So that is if we're driving up here near or towards Durango West, um, it's gonna be a road that goes off to the left before you get up this way. And you're gonna see a lot of these, these kind of lower home prices, either a little bit of a funky layout, they need a lot of work. Uh, I do wanna mention that a lot of these things are negotiable. Sometimes sellers are really motivated to sell and some of these things are negotiable. So don't be um, too frustrated by that. But those might be some of the reasons that you're gonna see lower price points. The other thing is that property itself was right on County Road 141. So it's a busy road, um, especially in the winter. It's a little bit sketchy because there's a, quite a bit of turns and getting out, I was just talking to somebody and they were saying getting out on that road from the house was kind of sketchy because you can't see very far in each direction when you're trying to pull out onto this highway. Uh, another few examples, you're gonna see some homes in Bayfield pop up. Bayfield's a great area. Definitely refer to my video on pros and cons of living in Bayfield or reasons not to move to Bayfield if you can't handle these items. So I really uh, address the concerns of people that live there, reasons they might not like it, uh, things like that in that video. But you will see um, Bayfield, generally I'll go over a few of those items. So Bayfield gets quite a bit more snow. They get a similar amount of snow as some of our higher elevation areas, really like this subdivision, Durango West or Edgemont, some of these higher elevation areas because they are up at um, 6,900 feet in town. Definitely check out some of my other videos to see a lot more details there, um, since I don't wanna make this video all about Bayfield. But when you're shopping and you're saying, ah, can I get within 30 minutes of downtown Durango? That's a town that's gonna to be really interesting to you if that's your goal of staying kind of in that five, $600,000 range or under. Uh, the other areas are gonna be south of town where it gets to feel a lot more like New Mexico. Uh, and if you haven't been to New Mexico, it just feels a lot more deserty. It gets a lot flatter. You don't get these pine trees that you see behind me. Uh, you get a lot more of just, you're, you're a lot more out in the open, exposed, a lot more dirt, a lot drier. And it is a little bit warmer that direction, just a little bit less snow. Uh, Ignacio is a town that is south of here. You're going to see, you're again, kind of that 40 minute drive range to downtown from that area and home prices will definitely go down. You will see a lot more land as well out that way. So you're gonna see there's one property on the market right now for, I wanna see it's somewhere around 500,000 and it has about 40 acres on it. So the acreage is amazing. It's fairly flat and usable, but it's a lot of dirt. Like you're not seeing these kind of trees behind you. Um, a lot of 
some, I should say, driveways in Forest Lakes are gonna be a little bit longer. You're gonna see a little bit more acreage, um, a little bit less driveways that are all paved, like here in Durango West. So I would imagine, I shouldn't even say imagine, it's going to be more work in the winter in Durango West. Now I will say I've learned that there's a really, or sorry, in Forest Lakes. It's gonna be more work in the winter regarding plowing, um, depending on the property. But I was also told, you know, they've got a great Facebook page. People are really friendly with each other. And you can definitely call your neighbor. Hey, can you help me? I'm out of town for the weekend. Can you help me plow my driveway? I've heard of great stories about people helping each other out with that kind of stuff. Um, I'm sure it's similar here in Durango West. Uh, but just have specifically heard stories about that in Forest Lakes. So I think that's one of my bigger comparisons. Uh, both subdivisions, but I would probably say more so with Forest Lakes, you're a little bit more tucked into the trees. You've got really big, huge, mature trees. Now you can see that behind me here as well. But over in Forest Lakes, you're going to maybe get a little less sun into your home, depending on where the home is. But that's what it seems like to me as I drive around, tour homes, show people homes in that area compared to here. And the big one is everybody wants to be close to downtown Durango or just all the amenities that Durango has to offer. And of course, here in Durango West, you are a lot closer to that. Um, Price-wise, you're probably, you are going to find lower price homes out in Forest Lakes. Um, you do have that longer drive from Forest Lakes to Durango. If we're just comparing distance to Durango and if you really want to be closer to Durango. Uh, what's amazing about Forest Lakes compar comparatively though, is they've got Lake Simpatico. They've got a beautiful lake that you can fish on, a trail that goes around it, maybe about half a mile, a little bit more trail that goes around it. And then trails that they go through the subdivision as well. I'm, I'm a distance runner, so I do love those dirt roads, but they're more to maintain and deal with in the winter and spring. Uh, in spring, you're going to get that mud, those muddy roads is the snow is melting here in Durango West or other paved subdivisions, you're not. So those are some of the things that really come to mind. Please let me know if you have other questions about the comparisons. Uh, really wanted to focus this video on just, you know, comparing, contrasting so that you can see those differences because I think those are big questions from a lot of my clients. You're also going to see some lower price homes as you go out towards Mancus. Um, so that's about 30 to 40 minute drive again from downtown Durango and they have uh, they definitely get more snow. They're above that 7,000 foot range. They don't have much as far as amenities. They have a small little grocery store. They have some great restaurants for sure. Um, we just had pizza there the other day. They've got a great cidery um, spot there. They've got some awesome lakes, but you just don't have that size as far as uh, compared to Durango. So a good context for you, good context for you is Durango is about 19,000 people in town, uh, city proper. Mancus and Bayfield are both about two to 3,000 people, give or take. Uh, and so I just wanna kind of show you, again, the areas that you might be looking at if you're trying to stay under or around that half a million dollar price point. Uh, I looked on a mortgage calculator earlier today at 500, I think I did 500,000. This is a very rough number, don't uh, take my word for this. Definitely talk to a lender, but at 500,000 with 20% down, uh, so about $100,000 down, 7% interest, which is roughly what we're at now, uh, your payment is roughly 3,000 or $3,100. Real, real rough estimate, because it's dependent on taxes, insurance, if we can get buy that interest rate down. If you're even thinking about moving to Durango, give me a call, text, email, days, nights, weekends. We're licensed realtors. Would love to help you out with anything you need. Again, want to mention if you had any uh, thoughts or questions about the drone footage, like if you wanted extra additional drone footage, let me know. Give me a call, text, email. Happy to get you additional drone footage of something that maybe you didn't see. Um, please like, share, and subscribe this video. Really appreciate you watching. Thanks.